so we are group four, um, uh, consisting of six people. Uh, our our client team is Tiago Marbeck and uh, Stephen Hausman. Our network team is Cameron Foster and Tony Lau. And uh, our server team was uh, Chris Maycomb and myself, Patrick Lee. And our game is, uh, our game is a COVID themed game. Uh, if, you'll, if you'll think back to when this whole COVID pandemic started, uh, you probably remember a slight shortage of toilet paper in all the stores. And so uh, w when we were, when we were uh, planning for this game, we, we ended up uh, latching onto this COVID idea. And the, uh, what happened with that was, uh, we thought about starting to clean out the toilet paper and envisioned a sort of tower defense game. But instead of a base where you're normally defending, you're, uh, you're instead employees at a grocery store and you're attempting to defend a store to try to uh, to try to make your supply of toilet paper last as long as possible. Uh, the inspiration behind this game are uh, our tower defense games, uh, strategy games. I myself am a really big Sim fan. Uh, so we want to encourage players to uh, to think a little bit teamwork based games like Overcooked, where you have to work together to achieve a common goal, uh, and also zombie games, uh, such as uh, such as Left 4 Dead, Call of Duty Zombies. Uh, unfortunately, we seem to ha be having a couple of technical difficulties within the uh, within the server. We were we we're hoping to avoid these. Uh, we had some uh, we had some issues with uh, with our mouse control. So I think it's just is somebody else moving the mouse on the demo machine right now. Yeah. Let's see. Are there multiple it's people connected to the, yeah. to the demo machine? Connected right now. Because it works fine for the most part, but I think someone else moves the mouse and it uh, makes it go a bit crazy. <laughs> Cod zombies, COVID nineteen. You're you're actually not far off. Uh, You'll notice that this game is from a first-person perspective, and that's because uh, we were heavily inspired by uh, by games like COD Zombies uh, and Minecraft. I want mean, kind of like the same feel. So while should we're we, should we restart the server? Tony's having yeah. an issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll restart so while it. we're we're going to end up restarting the server. It's up it again. Seems that, yeah. It's up again. Yeah. It's up again. Oh no. Okay. So, just as we're waiting, go. Happy game is really Minecraft. <laughs> true, true. Just progressive with less blocky forms of Minecraft, right? Okay, looks like looks like we're back. Are we on? Yep. Everything is working. Yeah. Ooh. All right. So, so if you notice in the game, uh, you'll notice that we have. We kind of we toilet the paper in the middle of the store, and that and those are the goals for the uh, uh, for what we call customers. Uh, so the customers are going to spawn at the corner of the store, and they're going to kind of just walk. They're going to try to walk toward the toilet paper uh, to get the share of toilet paper, and to uh, and to satisfy these customers, you have a couple options available to you. You have uh, barricades, which are from the brown colored shelves, uh, which you can place down to block the path, uh, to block a path temporarily. And you also have three different kinds of products. Uh, you can see that uh, currently there is a uh, a barricade in hand, and then now our uh, and now our demo machine is looking at a blue product, and these enemies. Uh, once they spawn, they will have colors. And what color they are corresponds to the kind of product that you have to give them to satisfy them and make, go away, make them go away. Uh, and this is the way that, uh, and this is the way that you'll progressively survive waves 
And you notice that in the top right corner, you have a toilet paper counter. Uh, and when that runs out, of course, you lose. Uh, question, what did you do to understand the performance and engagement of your game? Uh, we kind of just played ourselves. <laughs> More or less. All right. You're gonna start? Yeah. Uh, so if we could, let's see if we can start up. Why are there now four there users? Why are there now four users connected to the demo? Oh, sure. It doesn't seem great. It's definitely messing with the muscle times, but it's okay. All right, let's see if we can get a game started. Yeah, okay. Can someone right. who's connected with the demo machine not open us? Thank you. Do you have relative? Uh, I do. Someone else is on right now, I think. In, oh, in no. House. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay you seem to be back. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, uh, our, the round ended there uh, pretty quickly. Our round one is very few, uh, very few customers. And so, unfortunately, our demo machine ended up kind of staring at the sky for most of that. But if you could... I'll position like this so yeah. we can see a bit. Yeah. If you could look, at, look in the corridor, actually, at this one. Okay. In the corner. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll notice that uh, what's being looked at now is the corner, uh, like down the corridor, is the spawn point. There's a green enemy right now. Or nope, that's a player. Yeah. And and so th this game is very is round based. Somewhat like uh, Call of Duty Zombies, there are infinite rounds. Uh, you you play until you lose because winning is overrated. And uh, the rounds will get progressively more difficult as uh, as the game goes on because more and more uh, more and more customers will spawn. See, who's not ready? Who is not ready? All right, there we go. Yeah, you can see that we we tried to texture each of the turn each of the uh, items that you get to satisfy customers into a different item that you might get at the grocery store. So this one's a watermelon. Uh, we have a jug of water, and then we have a we have a bottle of your favorite beverage. I think hope that we hope that the sound is coming out in the stream, but yeah, we, have some, the, we have some we have some nice the weird gameplay. Oh. It's a little bit laggy over again. Yeah, uh, you yeah, saw I, you saw two weird. customers walk past the demo machine and just kind of walk into the toilet paper, and that means that they successfully got toilet got the toilet paper, and now toilet paper is being deducted uh, from their total, and that's not good. You also notice that uh, there's a money counter in the bottom left corner of the screen. And that is the resource uh, with which you uh, make barricades. So barricades are, we determined barricades to be the most impactful tool uh, available to you to kind of slow down the horde uh, as it may. And so barricades cost money. And the only way you, uh, and the only way you can make money is to satisfy uh, satisfy the customers. Yes, the the customers are, are the same model as the players uh, because we're because we're all people. Yeah, uh, the way to tell is basically that players have a kind of particle trail when they're moving. Uh, and customers don't. Again, if somebody is on the demo machine, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're having uh, a bit, little bit of difficulties playing on the BNC machine. We're actually, we've actually, I'm actually it. Yeah, I'm actually finding it better to play from outside the network. It's actually less laggy, yeah. like a local machine. Oh god, panic! They're all coming. Yeah, unfortunately, our, uh, uh, our we strategy didn't, we has didn't anticipate having uh, having VNC uh, be such so an issue uh, with regard to our input. Local. So most of our players in this 
uh, in the server are actually playing from home. Uh, we're all in San Diego, as far as I know. So, so we're pretty close. Their network code is apparently robust enough too. Well, I mean, I'm in I'm in the Bay Area, and even here it's pretty yeah, close enough. Oh, there, yeah, there you go. So, uh, so our demo machine, you can see that our demo machine was holding a red item and gave the red item to the customer and the customer disappeared. And you can also see that the money counter incremented uh, in the bottom left corner. So you were you were rewarded for satisfying customers, uh, you know, just like you'd be paid in a normal job. Uh, and, and you can and you use this money primarily to buy barricades. So we're going to keep going. Uh, eventually, eventually there will be many, many enemies, and it'll be pretty hard to keep up. But we made the scaling pretty gentle for uh, pretty gentle for uh, the most part. So we actually play. But there you go. You can see that once there's no barricades uh, and the uh, customers break through, this game gets pretty difficult. Uh, mostly because you can only hold uh, you can only hold one thing at a time. Uh, how uh, and when do the barricades disappear? Uh, the barricades disappear when customers collide with them. So they will, you know, uh, frustrate customers will attempt to get the toilet paper and they're beating on the barricades as they're next to them. And the barricades can only take a certain amount of punishment. And then, uh, and when they take enough punishment, they will disappear and allow the customers to continue on toward the toilet paper. There's a red one too. Yeah, the enemies didn't actually collide, uh, collide with each other. Uh, because if they did, then they would probably get stacked up in these later waves and just go all the way back to spawn. And that creates some really interesting problems. Uh, uh, also... We had a couple design considerations uh, coming in. Uh, one of them was that uh, if you hold an item to satisfy a customer, uh, it will actually satisfy all customers in a radius around you. Uh, this was actually created mostly for, not mostly because it's easier. Uh, it was easier to just kind of uh, delete uh, delete customers in like a radius around you than actually figure out where you were looking at any given time. Uh, but the side effect of that is, is that the, Game gets very easy if you design a map with very few checkpoints. So you notice that because uh, in Ghosties or Style, there's a lot of aisles, and and as a result, there's going to be a lot of places for all the uh, for the customers to come through. And uh, you can see the players are defending are defending the primary checkpoints, but there uh, but there are are alternative routes. And so that was uh, one of the things that we had to consider uh, when we were uh, when we were building this map, along with the aesthetic implications. Wow, pretty close to losing. Still, <laughs> you keep losing. You keep losing one side worth of barricades. Yep. We had other plans as to also as to having an enemy the enemy do different paddings. So have a better consideration of where to place the barricades, but due to time constraints, kind of didn't pan, pan out. Yeah, uh, I think for us, time was one of the, uh, was, was one of the main constraining factors. Another one of our plans features was uh, implementing some kind of frustration factor uh, with the, uh, with the customers. So, they could they could somehow be delayed uh, before they disappeared instead of you having to uh, click on them with an item. But again, that was cut due to time constraints. Uh, some two hundred IQ competitive moves. So as it turns out, in our uh, in our game, it's actually faster to move diagonal than it is to move uh, than to move in one direction. Just as just as an artifact of the way we're calculating movement, uh, if you do it if you do it in the wrong direction, you might flip into a shell. So be careful with it. But that is one way to get around the map faster. 
yeah, it's it's a feature. Don't worry about it. It's sort of like you know, it's not so, a sort of like feature. sort of like air shifting or bunny hopping. It's a it's a feature. Oh, barricades. Yeah, oh, no. oh no. Oh no. Okay. Lost. We lost, unfortunately. Unfortunately, the great sound effect didn't play. Oh well. All right. Um, yeah. I just want to check to make sure that so we're, we're at about time. Mm -hmm. um, were you guys able to show off everything that, that you wanted to show off? Yeah, we. I think we more or less showed off everything. Anybody have any objections? We okay. also meant. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, we meant to show off some things that we didn't necessarily want to show off, like our BNC bugs. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> These don't happen locally or not on VNC. It's just a, an artifact that carries over with how VNC uh, reads the mouse input from your computer and then uh, puts it on the remote desktop. So it's, normally the camera doesn't look like this when you're moving around. It won't it won't spaz out and go everywhere. Hey, let's see if any final questions come in. Um, and while we pause and wait for that, are there any final comments or things that you'd like to say? Mm. Yeah, I, I think it just uh, just like to say that uh, despite uh, despite some of the pain that may have happened this, this quarter, uh, we had a great time, uh, all of us. Yeah, I uh, would like to thank Professor Volker uh, and Edward for being so wonderfully helpful and and putting this together for us. It's, it's definitely been a, a great end to my undergraduate career. And I'm sure my teammates would say the same. Please don't wall me in. <laughs> we will wall you in. No escape. Oh, yes. There's no, there's no anti-trolling either. <laughs> trolling Although, is a feature. That's what I always say. It does cost money to troll. Okay, great job, you guys. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna clap on behalf of lots of people. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you mind if I take this last one? Tips for CSU future CSU 125 takers. Go for it. All right. And uh, Group One, go ahead and start getting started while Patrick is answering this last question. Okay. So as far as uh, tips go, I think uh, for our group, the biggest problem we had was kind of spreading out the word between uh, between the weeks. Uh, especially at, at the beginning, it seems like 10 weeks is a lot of time. And maybe, and at least for me, I had, I kind of had a picture of what the game would look like in my head. And I figured that it would be easier to make it into reality. But the, uh, but the farther you go throughout the quarter, the more you realize that each week passes very, very quickly. And so if you are uh, taking CC125 in the future, and I, I know this is uh, something that a lot of students have uh, said before, and a lot, of, a lot of instructors have said before, uh, but it bears repeating, start early, start often. And we'll, and we'll, give, a, we'll give a salute to a, a retired instructor for that one. All right. Once again, fantastic job. It's super great that it all came together. Um, and I love the toilet paper. <laughs>